Peace and salutations, family, and welcome to First Word from the Pastor Study. I am the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, Senior Pastor and Founder of All Christ Love Ministries. Here we are on the third Sunday of 2021. Amen. I just want to start off, we're not going to be long before you today, but I just want to start off by asking you to remember one thing. God is in control. Let me repeat that. God is in control. 2021 has started off a little bit rough for us, amen. Um, what we saw on January 6th at the Capitol, and right now we're starting to see, well, some of us have already have seen it, but we are seeing a rise and a, a greater outing of racism and bigotry that we haven't seen in 70 years. 70 years. But through all this, we're, you know, even to the point where we're seeing it in government, amen, where we're seeing our, quote, elected officials participating in racism and bigotry. Uh, we're seeing their true colors, and it may seem even hopeless at this time. Just try to remember still that God is in control. Four years ago, we saw this. And Wednesday, that demon of four years ago, it's going to start coming to an end. I was recently told that a pandemic of the magnitude that we've seen is not just a lesson from God, but it's a sign that he is about to come back. Keep that in mind. And this is why we're going to be talking about what we're talking about today. Amen. Uh, I want to direct you to the book of John, the Gospel of John in the New Testament. It is the fourth of the Gospels, right after Luke, the beloved physician. Um, a lot of people have recognized that John is the disciple that Jesus loved. Let me just give you kind of a visual on this. You see, when back in those days when people ate, they did not sit at a table in a chair like we do. Uh, the table was maybe this high off of the floor, approximately five, six inches off of the floor, and you usually laid on your side as you ate. And John and Jesus would normally eat with their backs touching each other. They're even... Uh, scriptures that indicate that John laid in Jesus' bosom at times. Um, how smart he was to lay in the bosom of God, amen. Um, knowing and feeling the power of God firsthand, amen. So we're going to be reading in the book of John, chapter 8, the Gospel of John, verses 37 to 47. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. As I have indicated, if you're new to the broadcast, as I've indicated in the past, I prefer the New King James Version because it is the closest of all the translations, all the versions that are out to the original King James. What it does is it takes the these, dies, and doists out and puts you, me, and does in without screwing up the thrust of the scripture. It still keeps it same fortitude the same dimension amen John chapter 8 we're going to start at the 37th verse we're going to be reading from 37 to 47 and thus says the Lord I know that you are Abraham's descendants but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you I speak what I have seen with my father and you do what you have seen with your father. They, and the they being the Hebrews, who, he's, who Jesus is speaking with, they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, 
If you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. But you, now you seek to kill me. A man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You do the deeds of your father. They said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. Let me say that again. Because you are not able to listen to my word. You are of your father, the devil and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Let me just say that again. Verse 47. He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God just going to ask if you would stand in the gap as I pray. Merciful Father, again, I come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking and praising you for this day and another opportunity to do something right in your sight, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you in advance right now, Father. I thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do in the name of Jesus, God. Now, Father, I pray that you sit me down and you stand up, Father. Decrease me and increase you, none of me and all of you. Instruct my mind and direct my vocal cords on what to say and do before these, your sheep. And transform me into the man you would have me be in Christ Jesus. Father, we pray right now that you move through this digital realm like a mighty rushing wind, O God, and have your way on today if it pleases you, O God. In the name of Jesus, I say again, have your way, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have your way, Father. And let the words that come forth today from you, God, be not falling on deaf ears, God, but be imbued in the hearts and the minds of the listeners, O oh God, so that we may be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word in the name of Jesus. Again, Father, have your way. And Father, please clean this up, your servant, creating me a clean heart and renew a right and steadfast spirit, O oh God. Because it's me, it's me, it's me that's standing in the need of prayer. As I give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It is in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus Christ we pray and say, Amen. As I was thinking of this text, as God put this text onto my heart a couple of days ago, and also under the premise of understanding what I said a few minutes ago that, you know, this pandemic isn't a sign of God's punishment per se, but it's a sign that he's on his way back. And then I recalled what it says in Matthew 24, where it says uh, in verses 30, uh, 36 and 37, I believe it is, it says, no one knows the day nor the hour, no, not the angels in heaven, only my father. I thought it not robbery that we focus on a few things to prepare for his coming, which is actually the mission, one of the missions of Christianity. And with these scriptures, I would like you to invite you to learn to listen. Amen. Learn to listen. Learn to listen. See, this is what the problem was with the Hebrews at the time, because they had been taught things by the Pharisees and the Sadducees 
the Sadducees being teachers of the law, the Pharisees being the religious hierarchy at the time. They, of course, they taught from the book of Moses, the law of Moses, amen, the first five books of the Bible. They taught those things to the people because that's what God had them to do in the Old Testament, amen. Uh, they were under the covenant of God, basically stating that, <clears throat> praise God, I will be your God and you will be my people and this is what I need you to do. And that's what he gave to Moses on those two tablets as he came down from the mount and that's what was followed by the Pharisees and the Sadducees, who, by the way, are also considered lawyers because they are interpreters of the law. The problem is that here is God himself walking amongst men in the name of this man, Jesus. Amen. The problem is that they're not understanding what God is trying to say because they already have one view, one world vision that they've been practicing for eons, centuries, and decades. But now along comes this man, Jesus, who is telling them something new. This is God himself stepping up to the plate before the people, and he's telling them something brand new, brand new, brand new. And they're just not getting it. So what did they do? What did the people do to God at that point? They condemned him. They called him a liar. They called him a blasphemer. They didn't want to believe because it was different than what they understood. So let's talk about that first point in this. In the book of Samuel, when the prophet Samuel was sent by God after, amen, the king had fallen out of favor with God because it was all about him at that point and he was not listening to God. Now there's a difference between listening to God and not listening to God, and I need you to understand that. God made it a little bit different back in the Old Testament because he had the prophets who would speak to the kings and tell the kings exactly what he wanted them to do. Now, King Saul, however, chose not to listen to God, listen to the prophet Isaiah, but chose on his own record of understanding and the dictates of this world. So the first thing, if we want to learn to listen, we need to understand that God tells us in the book of Samuel, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, amen. Let me repeat that. My ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, amen. So we have to have a change of attitude, amen, if we want to learn to listen. We need to have a change of attitude where it says in Romans 12 and 2, it says, be not conformed to the ways of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, you have to have God and the Holy Spirit in you, amen. You have to have walked with Jesus. You have to have had that touch in order to have this change in you. I, I often hear it said that prayer changes things. Did you not know that the first thing that prayer changes is you, amen? Hallelujah, glory to God. How can God talk to you? How can God do to, for you if you're still doing the same stuff that you used to do that offended God? Amen. So you, the first thing that has to happen is prayer has to change things starting with you. Understand that our ways are not his ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You have to have your mind transformed and by the way only God can do that only God can reach in get through all that muck and nonsense that's in your head amen and get through to that and get the truth to you hallelujah he uses his word to do this he uses his word to do this but sometimes he uses other methods glory to God hallelujah if you want to learn to listen, if you want to learn to listen, you have to understand what you're dealing with. Just like what Jesus was saying to the Hebrews. Let me break that bread for you. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God, and now I have come of myself. I have not come of myself but he has sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Now check this out. Because you are not able to listen to my word. 
you are of your father the devil. Well, let's break that down a little bit, shall we? You need to understand that before the devil was the devil, he was an angel. And quite a beautiful one, the book of Isaiah tells us, the devil was a beautiful angel. And the devil had great power on the earth as he does now, amen. And what took place was because he was beautiful, he thought himself better than God and decided that he did not have to worship man. What man was not worthy of him and even yet God was not worthy of him because he was beautiful. The devil was vain and filled with vanity and that's what cost him his seat in heaven. But he still maintained a great degree of power on this earth. We need to stop and take a look at this because we're used to the earth system, the world system. You know the system that I'm talking about. The system where God says, don't kick a man when he's down, but the world system says, that's the best time to kick him. When God says, do not steal, but there's white collar crime, left and right, amen. There's street crime too, but I think the white collar crime is important because it's a bigger numbers, bigger amounts of money being stolen. God says, do unto others as you would have them do unto you and love your neighbor as yourself, amen. But look at the bigotry and racism, racism that we've seen in the last week, not just in the streets, praise God, but in the United States Capitol. But this is the world system, amen. And I stopped by to tell you today that the world system is atypical to the way of God, amen. It is absolutely contrary and backwards. And I want to tell you also that sometimes the morality system that we have been taught is incorrect. It's biased. This is why we need to learn to listen to God, amen. Glory to God, hallelujah. Hosanna in the highest. We need to learn to listen to God. You have to unlearn what you have learned, amen, and learn anew from God himself. And this is what Christ was trying to do when he was speaking to these Hebrews and these Pharisees and these Sadducees on this one particular day. He was trying to teach them anew, trying to teach them the nature of God, his nature, amen, and how you get into the kingdom of heaven. But they could not hear his words because they were used to hearing the words of the world, a.k.a. the world of the devil. Don't think for a minute, you know, the greatest thing, the greatest trick that the devil ever pulled off was making the world believe that he does not exist. Amen. Glory to God. If you want to learn to listen, you've got to change your attitude. Amen. And just for the record, let me just give you a little warning here because, see, television and media has given us certain perspectives. Certain perspectives. And we expect certain things because of what has been broadcast to us, whether in the Book of Immortal or a movie or a radio show. Do you not know that just like God can hear your thoughts, the devil can hear them too? So if you pray and you say, Father, please speak to me in a, a way that I can understand. Give me that voice like Kirk Douglas in the Ten Commandments. The devil will hear that too. And the devil tricks many a person by speaking to them in that Kirk Douglas voice, like in the Ten Commandments. I must admit that when I was a younger man, there were a couple of times I prayed and I asked God to speak to me. And I heard that Kirk Douglas voice from the Ten Commandments. But this brings me to my third point in this, because... When God speaks, there are certain conditions, but when the world speaks, there are other conditions, and they are totally opposite to each other, amen. Let me explain that for you. Do you recall having a gut feeling before? Sometimes that's God talking to you. Sometimes it's that you ate 
that chili cheese dog too fast. But there are also times when you feel that gnarling in your stomach, when you feel the hair standing up on the back of your spine and the back of your neck. Amen. That's God speaking to you. Let me, let me just help you to learn to listen real quick. Because when God speaks, first thing is that when God speaks, when, when you learn to listen, when God speaks, what he says will align with his word. If God tells you, hey, you're broke, you got to do what you got to do, go out and rob a bank, that is not God speaking to you. That is the enemy. If, 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 brothers, 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 if, 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 you hear a voice in your head that says, man, she pretty, go on and grab her by the behind. That is not God speaking to you. That's that other guy, amen. That's that other guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, 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 if you hungry, you homeless, and you out there, and you hear a voice in your head that says, that's all right, it's okay to feed your family, go ahead and shop loot from that store. That is not of God, brother. That is not of God, brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you. Because it does not align with his word. His word says, thou shalt not steal. His word says, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Hallelujah. See, the world is on a free for all right now. I mean, I'm not here to judge anybody today. That's not my job. But I would like to point out to you certain things that have happened in this world of today. Right now, it's turned into a situation where it's hip to be gay. I'm not saying anything negative, really, against the gay brothers and sisters out there. I'm not judging you, but I'm telling you that the world has changed to a point where now it's hip to be gay. It's encouraged. We're legalizing marijuana. Well, if that's your thing, do your thing. And you have to deal with God on, a, on another level when your time comes. That's not my thing. I'm not condemning you for it. But there was a time when that did not take place, amen. It's, it's become commonplace now that we could just use people sexually and so forth, but we're not even talking about the rule of marriage, amen. You know, it's been for a long time that I recall, brothers and sisters, where brothers was out there and the thing was about getting as many notches on your gun. You know what I'm talking about when I say your gun, amen. Some of these brothers, it, it, it amazes me how today you got some grown men that's out there still trying to get notches on the gun. Instead of settling down and being a good man and, ha and procreating and taking care of what you're procreating, amen. And I'm not just talking about the financial aspect, I'm also talking about spending time teaching them something, doing things to make them laugh. Matter of fact, why does the law have to tell you to do it? Hmm. Hmm. You better learn to listen because you're used to listening to the world system. You got to have a change of attitude. It's time for that. But then you got to know what you're dealing with. Another thing is that when you're doing the right thing, I'm going to share a little story with you. See, God is so great. He knows what's coming. He sees what I don't see, amen. And late last year, I want to say about last August, and this is around the same time that my Trust God campaign started. I was in a quandary as we moved toward the end of the month and was about to go into September. I had a roommate here, but I was thinking that maybe I would save $100 a month and move into a smaller unit, amen. Um, so I went to see the unit. When I first went to see the unit, I was not immediately impressed. I envisioned my furniture in there and my office furniture. It was only a one-bedroom apartment, amen. And as I looked at it, I was devastated with the thought of how am I going to fit everything that I possess into this domicile. And when I should have been packing to make the move, I had already put a deposit on this new apartment. When I should have been packing to prepare to make this move, I was overwhelmed with a horrid feeling. I did not want to do it. I was not satisfied. 
And then I looked at this place where I am now, where I have been, and I noticed that I had fixed it up the way that I wanted it to be for me. I noticed that I had become comfortable with it, that I actually liked it. I liked my kitchen, amen. I liked how I had my living room set up as I awaited my new furniture to come. So I took it upon counsel that night with a couple of people, but I, did, I made that leap of faith. Notice I said leap of faith. I trusted God that first time that night, uh, in the first night of this campaign of trusting God that I have. I trusted God that night and I said, you know what, sometimes you got to say, the money. Sometimes you got to say, you got to say, don't worry about the money. God will make it out to be all right. Amen. And here I stand today, this extra bedroom has now become my office slash studio. Here I am in my office slash studio. Uh, my furniture is here. I'm quite comfortable. But God saw the purpose for this extra bedroom before I did. And I want to tell you that when I just made that decision where I'm not going to worry about the money, I was swept over with a sense of calm, of peace. I was comfortable, content, and happy with my decision to remain here. And that came from nowhere but God. So the thing that I need you to understand, not only when God speaks, when you learn to listen and when God speaks to you, not only is it a case where it aligns with his word, but he'll also give you certain emotional responses where you will feel a peace that the world cannot give, a sense of calm, a sense of competence, amen, a sense of happiness, praise God. It's almost euphoric, you're satisfied, amen. But when the other guy, when the devil is speaking to you, well, you know, the Bible tells us that God is not the author of confusion. When Satan is speaking to you, praise God, what's going to happen is you're going to have doubt. You're going to have confusion. You're going to have chaos. You're going to feel unsettled. You're going to feel disturbed. You're going to feel disheveled. You're going to feel messed up because deep deep, deep inside your spirit that came from God, you're going to realize that this is not God talking to you and what you're being told is wrong. Glory to God. But also, again, this is why one of the tenets of this ministry comes from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Study to show thyself approved and not be ashamed, but a right divider of the word of truth. Because the devil, who is basically the prince of this world, has a way of mangling the scripture and messing people up with the scripture itself. He tried to do it to Jesus in the desert when Jesus was fasting for 40 days. He would use half of a scripture to make it sound legitimate to Jesus. But Jesus, being God himself, knew the scriptures because uh, he wrote them, amen. And he was able to turn back to Satan and say, it is written. And then turn the whole scripture and Satan had no recourse but to back off. When you learn to listen, you better start by studying to show yourself approved so that you will know the signs of when God is speaking to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. God does not play around with us, I'm trying to tell you. You got to learn to listen. You got to understand that his thoughts are not our thoughts and his ways are not our ways. You got to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Ha. You got to understand what you're dealing with. You have to know that when God is speaking to you, it's going to align with his word. And you're going to have some very positive, pos positive physical responses to his word. Amen. Because see, the devil is out there. The Bible proclaims that the devil is 
like a hungry lion going to and fro looking for souls to devour. But I stop by to tell you today that God is still in control. He is the Savior. He is the way. He is eternal life. You better come around and check it out because the time is coming soon. The pandemic has come. You might think it a punishment, but the pandemic is a sign. And the sign is that God is coming back. He's coming back to take his throne. He's about to step into our lives once again. One more time to set the record straight. You want to listen to the devil? Go right ahead. But not me and my house. We're going to follow the Lord. How many want to follow the Lord today? Do you have it in your head? Do you have it in your heart? Do you have it in your spirit? Are you ready to follow him? All you got to do is say yes. One more time, say yes. Say yes to God. Say yes to Jesus. Invite him into your heart. Invite him into your life. He's waiting for you. The whole thing about it, we came from the kingdom of heaven. We were manifested in flesh on this earth to do God's bidding. But what we got here, we got caught up in the ways of the devil. We learned to listen to his voice. But the problem is that we have not come back yet. Jesus is the way to come back. He's the mechanism because God knew that we could not walk in his ways and follow his commandments by ourselves. He had to send the mechanism. So he came down in human form. He was a blood sacrifice, fulfilling his own word, paving the way, becoming the world map. He was the way for us. You got to thank God for Jesus because he brought him here and he made the way for us to get home. And he made it easy for us to get back. He said, all you got to do is repent and be baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Are you ready for that today? Are you ready to make the change? Are you ready to be in the grace? Because you're already in the grace. But the time is coming when the grace is over, when the time is slipped away, when the book will be closed. Are you ready? Are you ready? Say yes! Say yes! Say yes! Say yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, I'm going to tell you that life is so much easier when you learn to listen because you don't rely on the voice of the world. You don't even have to have it verbally spoken to you by somebody else. But when you recognize, when you learn to listen, you can recognize when God is speaking to you. I myself have gotten out of the habit, glory to God, I've gotten out of this habit of saying God told me to tell you, or God told me, or God said to me. Because it would give a connotation that I'm sitting there and God comes over and he whispers in my ear, like, and it doesn't really happen like that. You see, when man speaks, it lands on ears. But when God speaks, it lands on hearts. You know, I want to just show you one thing as we prepare to open the doors of the church. What I have written here, because my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, so I print out the lines of scripture for the preaching text. And you see, of course, I have the word of God. I have a Bible sitting here open. I do not write sermons. There was a time when I was published in a local Christian newspaper every month, 
And that because it was in a written format, I wrote a sermon. Because it was not cost effective to provide a CD or cassette tape with every newspaper that went out. I do not write sermons. Jesus said, when you're brought before the people, even though this had many meanings because it actually foretold of a future event with, uh, praise God, with, uh, with Paul be appearing before the Sanhedrin, the leading council of Jews. But Jesus said, when you are brought before the people, do not worry about what to say, because I, that, well, in the book of Matthew it says, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. I believe it's in the book of John, it says, I will tell you what to say. So when I come before you with these messages, this is not pre-written text. I didn't memorize it. I didn't plagiarize it. I didn't download it the other day and work all week on it. I, I didn't start rewriting it. Because if you're preaching, you are a megaphone for God. You are a microphone and a translator for God. That he can speak through you. And you are. he puts the... Uh, the ideals and the thoughts and the lessons into your mind and that you verbalize them and share them with his people so that they get the message. And the way that you know is because you're going to be touched in your heart. When you leave here today, you will not feel like you were entertained. But you should feel the love of God in your heart. You should feel the love of God in your heart. And as you heard the word come forward today, learning how to listen, perhaps you were moved to know more. And I'm here to tell you today that there is a free gift available to you. And that gift is the gift of eternal life through Christ Jesus. He is the sacrifice. He is the fulfillment of God's law. He is the road map. John 14 and 6 says he is the way, the truth, and the light. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Let me be your arbiter of succession today to the throne of grace that you too may find eternal life in Christ Jesus. It's free. It's really not hard at all. And you don't have to do this in some grandiose act publicly. You can do this silently. You can do it in your prayer closet by yourself. You can do it in your bathroom if you want to. But the most important part is that you mean it from your heart. Or maybe you already knew Jesus. But you got caught up in religion instead of spirituality. See, religion is ceremony. Spirituality is your personal relationship with your Creator. And when you are in an institution that is caught up in the celebration, then you have to look a certain way, and you got to talk a certain way, and you got to act a certain way, and you got to drive a certain car, and you got to wear a certain jewelry, and you got to give a certain amount of money, not just once a week. And then people get catered to. There's actually a form of religious bigotry that goes around where the people that tithe and make bigger tithes and offerings get treated better than the ones that don't have it to give. And if you were in a situation like that, I wouldn't blame you if you pulled back from the church. 
but you shouldn't have pulled back from God. You may have felt disillusioned. There are even some who are dealing, because of this pandemic, they're dealing with maybe one or multiple losses in their family. And they're asking the question, why God, why is it this way? And because they're not getting answers or because their loved one didn't come back, they became disillusioned with God. But as you learn to listen to God, one thing is clear and evident that when you start to question God like that, that's the enemy talking. Because if you know that God is in control, if you know that 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 God is in control, there is no question. He did it and it is good and it's beyond my understanding, but he's got a reason down the road and profit me in the end. If you learn to listen. But if you fit into one of those categories that we just discussed, we need you back home. We're stronger with you than without you. God still loves you and still God wants you back with him at the end of this time on earth that he has for you to do things here. You know what your time here is for basically? Basically, it's to be a testimony of him. That's why you go through these tests, to be a testimony. The greatest war that we're dealing with is to let Satan know that God is great and we love him. That's the greatest testimony that we can offer. We have our own selfish reasons too. God knows and understands them just as long as we come home. So if this is your first time or maybe you need that quickening today, I invite you to repeat these words after me. Father, I confess that I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. But I believe in Jesus. I believe he lived a life without sin and died for my sins. And now he's in heaven interceding on my behalf. Jesus Come into my life. Come into my heart. Be my Lord, my Savior, my Master, and my friend. Holy Ghost, seal me until the day of redemption. In Jesus' name, amen. If you said those words from your heart for the first time today, let me be the first to welcome you into the body of Christ, the family of God, amen. You are now an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ and me and many of us, amen. Entitlement to the kingdom of heaven and all the benefits thereof. If you have said those words and meant them from your heart today, to be quickened and reinvigorated and brought back into the house of God, welcome home. We're glad you're back. We're praying for more workers in the vineyard. We need you. Just a couple of points. Point number one. Since you're coming in, let's do this the right way together. We are offering to you to become part of a Bible preaching and teaching church, such as this one. We're what I refer to nowadays as a COVID church right now. We're online, amen. But 
a time will come when we will have regular services, regular Bible studies. But fear not, because we, because of this lovely mantle of education, we will still have live broadcasts that you can participate in. Once that time comes, once we have gotten past this pandemic, and it is safe to come out. Remember that part of my job as a pastor is to direct and protect the sheep to the degree that I would give my life for them. So by no way am I supposed to put you in harm's way, and that could be having you in my presence. So when the time comes and everything is cleared up, the doors of the church are open. But we'd love to have you here, but if you need something more local to you, make sure that it is a Bible preaching and teaching church. Not a church that's constantly asking for dollars and cents, but a Bible preaching and teaching church. Secondly, when you get involved in a long-term relationship and what God wants us for is a lifelong relationship, I, I might add, in order to have that kind of relationship, you have to love somebody. There's only one way to really love somebody, and that's to know them. Now, see, God knows us. He loves us because he tells us in his word. Number one, he says he has every hair on our head counted. That's number one. Number two, he says, I knew you before I formed you in the womb. He said to Moses, did I not make man's mouth? God loves us because he knows us, because he made us. We are products of his. But we have to get to know him. The only way we can do that is through Bible study, through his word. So I recommend that you get yourself a Bible. And before you study that Bible, pray to God that he will open your mind to his divine wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And he will do it. I'm a witness of that. Because he tells us, he says, he tells us, knock and the door shall be open to you. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. He tells us that. So, pray. And then when you do, get into the Word. Don't try to read it like a book or a magazine. Read some scriptures, sit back, meditate on it, and let the Holy Spirit tell you what it means. And as well, any church, including ours, should have a Bible study. You need instruction from a learned teacher, someone who has studied to show themselves approved. I'm not uh, patting myself on the back, but I have been gifted by God to be able to teach. We have our Tele-Bible study here on Facebook every Wednesday night. It's held at 6 o'clock Mountain Time, 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. It's open to the public. You can look on your page. If you're a friend of mine, you can look on my page and you will see that we have the room open. And it'll have a little button that says join. You can join in. If you have a friend, I send out a post when I open the room, so if you have a friend who is not my friend, and you feel that they can benefit, you can share the post to your friend, tag it in, tag them in it, and they will have access to come into the room too. You hear a lot of ministries on Facebook nowadays talking about, come on in, come on in, come on in. Well, that's good, but I'm trying to tell you to come on in, come on into the upper room. Not just come into the room. Let's go into the upper room and have a deeper walk and a deeper understanding so that it will be easier for us to learn to listen to the Word of God. Amen. I don't like to say God is good. Good is for anybody. I like to say God is great. I like to say that He's great because He is. He's done so much for me. He's done so much for us that we don't even deserve. And I thank him for his grace and mercy. And again.
Again, I implore you to recall where we started at. Keep reminding yourself that God is in control. That this too shall pass. And that's all I got. I am the Reverend Dr. Mark Carter Pierce, Senior Pastor and Founder of All Christ Love Ministries. And this has been First Word from the Pastor's Study. Peace and blessings, family. We'll see you again at Bible study and next week. Until then, God bless you.